Yeah, that, I think it's, it, it depends on, you know, how much you're willing to, you know, to to stick it out. If you not, if you feel like you you put out plays all the time and your audience is getting smaller and smaller, you know, then you're not, you know, that's going to be discouraging. You're not going to want to keep on putting out plays. But if you're putting out quality stuff and, you know, and people are constantly coming to see it, I mean, that's what I think that's the key. You have You can't just throw out throw something together and that people are going to pay money to come see it. People, when they spend their money, they want to come see something that's, you know, worthwhile. I have yet to have anybody say that when they came to my play that it was a bad play. You know, and I just thank God for that because, you know, we all, when we write stuff, we may think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, but somebody else may say that was the worst play ever. You know, so you just, I mean, you're putting yourself out there. You're exposing yourself to these people, and you're hoping and praying that they see the message that you're trying to deliver and that they enjoy themselves, and they'll they'll be repeat customers. When you give quality work, you give repeat customers. That, that's with anything. That's with the clothing business. That's with the food business. You know, that's with the entertainment business. If you're putting out junk, don't I want to pay to see junk? Because now the dollar means so much more to people they can't afford to just give money away like they did back in the 60s or the 70s or the 80s and 90s. Now, you know, the dollar is shrinking, and, you know, hey, if I'm going to spend my money, I want to spend it on something that's worthwhile me going to see. You know, Let I me mean, ask you this you question. You have to put out quality work. Let me ask you this question. As a female playwright, or do you consider yourself a playwright, a stage producer, or a director? I'm all three. Okay. <laughs> I produced my play, I directed it, and I wrote it. Okay. So I'm all three, and I and I can I intend on being all three, you okay. know, because I feel like for me, it's for other people who are playwrights, it may it may be their goal is to be successful. Okay. I'm not saying that my goal is not successful. I, I want to be successful, but success doesn't always to me mean money. It means that I'm successful in my craft. And some people want to uh, want to be famous. Some people want to be rich. You know, I mean, it's no matter what they want. But my thing is just that I have a passion for this, and if I really don't make any money, I'm still going to be cranking them out because this is what I want to do. This is a legacy I'm leaving for me, myself, and my kids. You know, and my grandkids and stuff. I want them to know that okay, their mother, their grandmother, you know, had a, a, a vision, had a passion, and pursued it. You know, it's not it's not uh, that I'm doing this for anybody else. I'm doing this for Lori. This why is what why I did you pursue do. this? Why, you know? why are you pursuing it? Because this is a passion that I've had for since I was little. And I've always wanted to do this. And so even if I don't get on the scale of a Tyler Perry, I'm still out there doing it. You know, if you don't try it, you know, how are you going to know if you if you fail or succeed? Because, I, you know, I never have wrote a book before. That's why I said I'm going to write a book. You know, these are things that I'm checking off on my bucket list that I want to accomplish before I leave this earth. And you don't know when God's going to be calling you home, so I want to get this accomplished. So this is what I want to do. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what wakes me up in the morning that I think about, you know. These are the things I think everybody should do their passion. They should not do what they, you know, I mean, hey, we we all have to make, you know, logical decisions that, hey, if, if I can only get this job over here and it's paying the bills, okay, I'm not going to quit that job because it's paying my bills because I have a passion to do something else. But save towards that passion. Work towards that passion. Constantly work on that passion every day. Don't just let it die in the grave with you. Do something about it, you know, because a lot there's a lot of ideals and a lot of passion that's dead out there in the grave in the cemetery because people just didn't get the umption or got that push or got that motivation from somebody just to do it. Their passion wasn't strong enough. It wasn't burned enough. Now I have accomplished that and, you know, I only want to do more, okay. you know, and a lot of people just don't do that, but this is, this is what I want to do. Let, let me ask you this. Okay. As a uh, wonderful mother, mm-hmm. <laughs> playwright, you're about to be married, We've talked about finances. How is this playing on your home as a playwright? I have a lot of young listeners, a lot of up-and-coming playwrights. But let's be real. Let's lay our cards on the table. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because the number one factor that breaks up a home is finances. Right, right. Okay? You're in a field that 
demands a large quantity of finances. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have done one play already. Right. Okay. You, you haven't done 13, 15. How did that play a factor in your engagement? Do you, I know you're probably playing a big wedding, 20, 20 15 to 20 bridesmaids, groomsmen, big old tear cake, uh, 12 oh, no. tear cake, oh, no. Chateau Boucher and <laughs> Condessa Del Mar. No, 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 no. Or, or out there in Romeoville. Or <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, how has I, this? I'm how very, has this? Um, how has this actually played financially? And how many friends have you lost? How many friends <gasps> have you gained? Uh, now that's that's what we need to do. <laughs> yeah, let's get down to the nitty gritty. <laughs> Okay, the, the, okay. Like I said, I had a passion for it for a while. All right. You know, so I've been I save a little bit every now and then. You know, to put it towards it. So my first my first run, you know, I had saved up all this money, and you know, I've spent every single dime on the pool some. You know, but because I but that that's because I knew I was going to need to get stuff for a set. I knew I was going to need stuff. You know, for after that, I need I knew all this stuff. And it wasn't like I just went and said. I woke up and said, oh, I'm going to do a play, and then, you know, didn't realize that there was finances involved, in it. and I knew I was going to need stuff. So, I, I you know, logically and, and, and uh, strategically, I planned for that. So then, you know, uh, when uh, after my second run, all that stuff I bought, I needed before. I didn't need the second run because I had it. So I didn't have to have as much, but then the, the audience wasn't as big. So that's what I'm saying. You know, if people get discouraged by that. Why don't get discouraged by that? I'm like, okay, hey, you know, at least people are coming to see it. That's my thing. People are willing to come see People who don't even know me, never heard of me, are willing to come see this play, you know. So I, I said, I'm, I'm in a good place. Now, as far as the friends, ooh, Yes. Well, wait a minute. Let me back up because you were talking about wedding stuff. No, I don't, I'm not planning no big wedding. I'm not doing all that. I, I don't do that type of stuff. You know, I, I, I've been married before, and so I don't need to have the big, you know, foo foo wedding. I don't need all that. You know, it's ridiculous. People need to, when you get older, you. I hope, at least I used to think, people would become more mature and more wiser and would be more, you know, careful on how they spend their money. Throwing all that money out the window is not important to me. You know, just. Having a small wedding, okay, cool, fine. Friends. Yeah, right. Uh, my friends, oh, my gosh. When I started, when I first wrote my book, you know, because my book is titled the same thing, I wrote my book, and I said, uh, you know, people were like, oh, so excited. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will support you. Woo, woo, woo. You know, and I was like, okay. So when my book came out, a lot of them didn't buy the book. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not going to put nobody for not buy a book. If you, but if you said you were going to buy it, I expected you to buy it. But if you didn't, I'm not going to hold that against you because everybody is entitled to do Maybe their finances wasn't in line at the time when the book how, came how out. Much, you know? How much was your book? It's a, it was just 20 bucks. 20 bucks? <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, you know, but hey, you know, hey, I've been a, I've been a single mother, you know, and so I know some, 20 bucks is a lot when you, you don't have any. You know, so I, I get I get there, but you know, I, but my friends weren't in that area. But you know, but I'm I'm giving them an excuse. So I'm not holding nothing against nobody because it's not about that. But then you know, I, I did the play, and then you know, I started noticing people were unfriending me on Facebook, and I was like, "What's going on?" You know, the closer it got to my play, the people started unfriending. So now they had the obligation of coming to the play. They didn't buy the books, and so I had to come to the play. And, you know, they just wasn't feeling that. And it's like, people stopped talking to me. People did I mean, I had a friend who was very, very supportive. I mean, she's like, if we had a definition of a friend, her picture would be in a dictionary. She is such a good friend. She's so supportive. She's not jealous. She's not vindictive. And she was she was promoting my play for me. I didn't even ask her to do that. She just went out and stopped promoting my play for me. And so she went out and sent some people some uh, some. Facebook posts and stuff and say, you know, come support Laura, you know. I mean, from the neighborhood, some of the people that we knew from the neighborhood are on, you know, on Facebook that we grew up with. And so one of the girls that we grew up told her, don't ever send me anything that has anything to do with Lori Hardy. And she's like, okay. And so she asked me, what did I do? I said, I don't even know. I, I ain't talked to her in years. I don't know what I did to her. It was just jealousy. They just don't want to see you succeed. It's like, that's what I was talking about earlier. People have passions, but they don't pursue them. And then they get mad at you when you pursue your passion. It's like, 
like, why are you getting mad at me? Because I went on ahead and did my, you sitting here holding on to your passion, don't want to do nothing about it, but you want to get mad at me because I'm doing something about mine. Maybe because you didn't ask them to be in the play. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't ask to be in the play, and, and but if they had it, I would say you have an audition like everybody else. I put some of my my friends in the play. I've been told to come and audition, you know. So, but it ain't like that. But it's just the people are just so jealous, you know. They don't they don't want to do nothing, but they don't want you doing nothing either. And that's just so unfortunate because I'm so happy for anybody who's out there doing what they want to do. I mean, if you just get. Uh, uh, your degree or whatever, I'm just happy for you. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, I don't have to have it in order for me to be happy for you. You know, but people are like that. And it's like I've lost a lot of friends, a whole lot of friends, just because I wrote a book and wrote a play. Wrote a book and wrote a play. Wow. <laughs> Let me ask you this question because it was originally the question that I was going to ask you, but we end up going deep into this. Mm-hmm. All my listeners, the word for next week is jealousy. Mm-hmm. Next week is the word is for is jealousy. Right. And for you, uh, Miss Laura, I would like for you to call back tomorrow for Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, oh wow! Show. Yeah, I want you to call back for the show Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay, and I'll, I'll talk to you later offline about that. Okay, it's something that you said. Okay, but do you feel that everybody and their mama? It wants to get into writing a book. <laughs> huh? Why, why is it that playwrights want to write a book but can't focus on one particular craft? You know what? And that's, and that's, that's interesting that you said that because, you know, I, I, I started writing books. Okay. You know, well, okay, look back up. You know, I, I started writing plays, but then I said I want to write a book. Why? And my and my creative mind, I'm constantly thinking about things I could be writing. I could write a book about this. So I had four books going on at the same time. And so finally I said, you know what, I got to focus and just write one book. So now I got that out of my system. So now everybody, when I wrote my book, and nobody knew, most people didn't know about my play, they asked me, when are you going to write your next book? I said, books are not my thing. My thing is play. Because I'm already, you know, before I really published my book, I had already almost finished my play. So I said, plays are my thing. Books are not my thing. And so it's like, well, you know, don't you want to write more books? Not really, because, I mean, even though I can write another book, I really don't want to write another book. I, I, I was just talking about this with my fiance and my daughter yesterday. They saw me that I didn't really need to write another book, because it's the book that we've been talking about. And I, maybe I'll write that one. But at this point in my life, Plays are my thing. That's what I want to do, and that's what I need to stay focused on. I think that's the reason why a lot of people go from here, there, and everywhere, because they're trying to be successful at something. They're trying to figure, okay, if it didn't work here, at least, you know, because, you know, the new saying, or I ain't going to say the new saying, but the saying out there no, is like, have multiple saying. streams of income. Real, this is real think, radio. We're not blog talk radio or anything. This is real radio. So go ahead. Say uh, what you got to say. Yeah, they um they think that you if you have multiple streams of income, you write a book, you write a play, you know, you you got money constantly coming in, and it's like I just don't think that you can constantly focus on all that, you know, especially because I'm still working every day, so <laughs> I don't have time like that to you know focus on book plays and all that. I just don't, you know. So I I want to stay focused on one thing, and I and that for me is plays. Okay. So, okay. So if you had to do it all over again, without a doubt, without thinking about anything else, Mm -hmm. what would you do differently? I would not commit, I hate to say this, I would not commit it to pain unless it was like a a condition in there. Because even even though I like to keep my word, it's like you don't, being a new playwright, you don't know what the outcome is going to be. And like I said, thank God my first run was very, very successful. But um, my second run wasn't as successful, and it's because of the area. I know, you know, the area, the people, most people have seen it. So um, I, I, would, I would put a different clause in there. That's probably about the only thing. Everything else, I would do the same, you know. I mean, because I have a great rapport with my actors. You know, they say that I'm the best director that they've had, you know. And I'm grateful for that, you know, because I, I, I've heard the horror stories. You know, and, and acting is, is um, a very small you know, family. There's, you you meet the same people over and over and over again. Even the actors meet the same people over and over and over again. So you know, it's it's a very small family, and the word gets out very quickly. So if you're a type of director or type of actor who you know who acts out, 
then, you know, it's going to get out. The word is going to get out because I 